And do you have any more tips on the investment side for healthcare entrepreneurs that are at that early stage or their friends and family and they're looking to get uh, external money? It could be seed stage, angel, or it could be they're ready for, for venture on how to position your company or when to position your company or how to, gosh, how to navigate yourself into investors that you um, don't have in your contacts list. Absolutely. Um, Pre-seed, like early kind of MVP stuff, the one rule of thumb is to the extent you can do that with as little capital as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some types of businesses you can't, right? I mean, it just just takes a certain amount. But if you can get to an MVP or some kind of proof that gives you, you know, some amount of work with customers, market, that stuff we talked about, limit the amount of dollars, self-fund, you know, uh, some of that if you can, uh, you know, get investment from your personal network or from, you know, uh, the, the easiest to get money. That's also smart money. So, you know, to the extent that you can get money from an angel investor that's in your space easily, that's better than just a random check because it's smart money. That's great. Right. But Mm -hmm. early on, I think, um, you don't want to spend a whole ton of your time chasing down money. you also don't want to get into the habit of overspending. Like it can be a, it can be a kind of a blessing and a curse. Someone just writes a couple million dollars early, especially as a less seasoned entrepreneur, the, the tendency is to be like, okay, let me look at my budget. Now I have a certain amount. Let me just hire a market. You start to overspend and over and lose focus. Um, so I would say early, early stage, if you can minimize, simplify the fundraise, there's that. Now, once you evolve from there and you say, okay, now I'm, I'm moving on to the seed stage or I need to raise a bit more to build this product out to actually start to build a little more of a team. Then, I mean, I think at that point, you know, it's um, it's a complex ecosystem out there. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, I, I would just say that uh, there's there's pitfalls. There's a lot of pitfalls out there. And so mm-hmm. to the extent you become educated and understanding the difference between a venture capital investor, seed investor, a uh, strategic investor, you know, every major corporation has an investment wing now, a family office. Like it took me a while mm-hmm. to figure all this. I would learn the, the vocabulary and vernacular of the investment world. What what are they? What's you have to put yourself in the investor's shoes and understand what they're trying to get out of it, and that that will facilitate your conversations. That's one guy. Once you get into that stage, that's one piece of advice. Second piece of advice is don't ever take any you know uh, investor conversation personally. I've seen so many founders and myself. You know, we're human beings. You know, so only so much rejection you can take without it kind of bugging you or making you feel bad. But the best analogy I heard with investment for founders is speed dating. It's like just mm-hmm. picture you're in a speed dating environment. You're not taking each interaction personally. And it's a, it's sort of a matchmaking game. And eventually you will build a network and you'll find someone who sees your vision, aligns with you well, genuinely like, you know, wants to help. And uh, so there's a little bit of like, you know, understand the process. So you're not like, you're talking to the right kind of folks. Don't take it personally. And then the last thing I'll say is you got to learn like, I, and I, I was late to the game on this personally. I, I went into this as like, I'm building my business. I'm an expert in claims and our revenue cycle. Fundraising process is about taking money in to help support what I'm doing here, right? And maybe getting some mm-hmm. advice high level in my business. But what I didn't realize is that similar to them being connectors, they're a wealth of knowledge. And so like, let's just say like you're, you got a 45 minute call, Zoom call scheduled with the potential investor, right? Typically speaking, when you do enough of them, 10 minutes in, both them and you know that it, whether there's even a chance that you'd ever actually work together, right? Whether it's best. And right. a lot, it can be a tendency for founders early on to just be like, turn off once they're like, well, this is, this is you know, it's like a speed dating. I'm sitting there, this is not a match next, right? And so I would fight against that strongly because the idea is that you have 35 more minutes on this call. And that investor has seen a lot and you know, they may not be right, but then you go, I, you learn to go into that mode of asking questions. And even if they know you're doing that, they like that too. And they're doing the same. They're asking you questions, learn about revenue cycle and things that, right. It becomes a, a bilateral education session and more mm-hmm. the investors are always educating themselves. Many founders are not educating themselves, right. They're so in their world. And I just, I learned, I, I built a network. I learned so much about my space and things outside, um, just talking to investors in the last two years. And so, yeah, that would be like three, there's no like, you know, secret sauce is getting your money from here. There's no like one size fits all answer, but it's don't get bogged down, learn a heck of a lot 
and definitely learn the vernacular and their perspective because a VC call is very different than a family office call, right? So 